everyone welcome to diksha previous year question discussion in this video we'll be discussing the latest 2020 june questions from the topic teaching aptitude i hope you are ready let's start so here is the first question i'll just read it out for you which of the following will make a student a good listener in the classroom six codes are given ability to deflect attention concentration desire to understand emotional outbursts humility to know and ignoring the other side so among the six option you have to select the points which can be considered as the feature which can make a student a good listener in the classroom situation so as we know the key term here in this question is good listener which are the components that will make a student a good listener in the classroom situation to be a good listener we have to have some qualities now what you have to do is you have to identify those qualities of a good listener so let's move to the codes now ability to deflect attention what is meant by deflect deflect means being distract what happens when our attention is distracting a distracted attention cannot be considered as a feature which can contribute to being a good listener in fact it negatively influences listening capacity so ability to deflect attention is a negative term which is uh, not related to good listener so we can exclude code a concentration do we need concentration to be a good listener of course yes concentration is one of the important point to be a good listener so yes concentration is in desire to understand do we have do we need a desire to understand an information that is being passed from a teacher or our peers in a classroom situation yes we indeed need it so desire to understand or having a motivation to understand what the other people are saying other person is saying is an important character to be a good listener in a classroom situation so this is also in desire to understand emotional outburst is there an is that a necessary quality to be a good listener in fact it's a negative quality emotional outburst points out emotional immaturity in students uh, those kind of immature emotional reaction cannot be considered as a characteristic feature of a good listener so emotional outbursts also can be eliminated from the option now humility to know what is meant by humility humility means being humble right by considering all the other points and others view points being humble to know something that is what uh, what is meant by humility so humility to know being humble to know what the other person is saying uh, what the other person is communicating so this kind of humble uh, nature is a very good uh, capacity or a very good feature that have to be possessed by a good listener so this is also in ignoring the other side is that a good quality for a good listener no it's a negative one ignoring the other side means not taking others perspective while communicating so certainly not ignoring the other side is not a feature that has to be possessed by a good listener so we can exclude this one also so here the remaining options the right codes are code number b c and e which makes the option d correct i hope you understood this question let's move to the next one so this is the second one if teaching is viewed as a continuum which of the following modality involves active give and take between the teacher and learner training conditioning instruction and indoctrination now as always first we have to identify the key term in the question here the key term is active give and take between the teacher and the learner give and take process between the teacher and the student teacher and the learner we have to identify we have to choose the option which can be considered as something which involves the give and take process between a teacher and a student now what is meant by something being give and take something having a give and take process in it give and take means there must be a role for both parties here in the classroom situation if we consider a context as a give and take process there must be role for both teacher and the student 
an interactive nature of situation is that if a situation is a give and take in nature. So we have to identify, we have to choose the option which can be considered as this kind of mutual interaction between a teacher and a student, which includes both give and take between the teacher and the student. Is it training? Is it conditioning, instruction or indoctrination? In the previous discussion videos, we were discussing about what is meant by teaching, what is the difference between training and conditioning and what are the important objectives of teaching when comparing with the uh, training and uh, conditioning concepts. So I hope you remember that. So let's see, training, what is meant by training? Training means uh, giving an intensive coaching, giving an intensive uh, teaching for a student in terms of some kind of skill right right uh, skill teaching that is what is meant by training now what was conditioning conditioning means uh, merely that association of uh, between a stimulus and a response uh, which does not include proper thinking or critical analysis from the side of students but is it is more like an automatic and an unconscious process so that is what conditioning is then instruction what was instruction instruction means a purposeful way of learning in teaching instruction means it's a purposeful way of uh, teaching something or making a student learn something that is what instruction is uh, we have discussed about instructional strategies there are several instructional strategies uh, like we can use uh, lecturing method discussion method brainstorming method all of those are different varieties of instructional strategies present in our educational system then what was indoctrination Indoctrination is also some kind of teaching but not with the opinion taken uh, from the side of students. Any kind of ideas or contributions or any kind of thinking uh, from the student is not encouraged in indoctrination. In indoctrination, a teacher or an authority figure will be uh, making the other group, the students believe something uh, without questioning what the authority person is saying. So those kind of, um, you know, exerting power, exerting power uh, on students, those kind of controlling teaching is called indoctrination. So in indoctrination, there is no role for uh, students thinking or students ideas. In fact, they are uh, very submissive in nature. So that is what indoctrination is. Now we know what is meant by training, conditioning, instruction and indoctrination. Now we have to choose the option which can be considered as a process which involves an active give and take process between a teacher and a learner. Is it training? We cannot say that because in training, a teacher will be giving, giving an intensive coaching to student. Um, there is no specific role for student there. The teacher will be having a major role um, about what is being what is being taught and how it is uh, how it is uh, taught to the students. So no specific role for student is there in conditioning also there is no active give and take role between a student and a teacher it is more like an unconscious and an automatic one so we cannot consider conditioning um, as a give and take process between a student and the teacher now instruction what is meant by instruction it's a purposeful way of uh, teaching or uh, making a student learn something uh, so yes instruction involves both a learning and teaching process between a teacher and a student which definitely include an active interaction between a teacher and the student uh, which is a very similar concept regard to uh, active give and take process uh, so yes instruction can be considered now let's discuss the fourth one indoctrination in indoctrination if there is any role for student, uh, it can it can be considered as an active give and take process. But no, in indoctrination, there is no specific role for student. In fact, the main authority figure is there, uh, which who is the teacher, not the student. So indoctrination can also be eliminated. So training, conditioning, and indoctrination can be eliminated as it does not imply any active give and take relationship between a student and the teacher. But instruction in specific itself may, may itself uh, denotes the active give and take process because uh, it is a purposeful behavior. It's a purposeful method of teaching or it's a purpo purposeful method of uh, making student understand and learn something. So yes, it includes the mutual relationship between a teacher and a student. Uh, not making confused uh, so this is what instruction is and this is the right answer option c